I want to invite our first guest on this afternoon, Jason Bohr, who happens to be president and CEO of the Lake Knight Energy Council. Welcome to Energy Matters, Jason. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Hey, happy to have you here. Uh, we want to talk about some kind of a cool thing. I saw one of these plates just the other day. Um, you've uh, worked out a thing, and I guess you got to go through the old DMV and uh, the Department of Transportation to make this happen. Tell us about this new license plate. Yeah, a couple of years ago, we had a lot of folks in the industry who said, hey, what can I do uh, to show my pride in the industry? Uh, we have a lot of specialized uh, plates in North Dakota. We looked into creating one that celebrated the coal industry. We were able to get the paperwork filled out. Uh, we created a nonprofit entity to manage that. And with the money we earn from those license plates, we have started presenting scholarships to some kids in the Cole County High School. So it's a win-win for everybody involved. Is this thing, is it really, I mean, just, just got started? This is the, the first year with the new design of the plates? It is, yeah. So we actually had our, uh, our design set up uh, about a year and a half ago then when the state of North Dakota redesigned its plates we got pushed to the back of the line but it's finally here and the plates are really a uh, great looking design with a coal drag line um, again it's just a great way to celebrate the fact that coal provides the power to do just about everything we do here in North Dakota. So the uh, the proceeds go to uh, a scholarship fund then and, and uh, like what are the eligibility criteria do they have to you know go into a, a, a lignite related profession or how's what's the criteria the coal counties have got together they've created a leadership program that's kind of along the lines of something like national honor society and these kids have to do leadership they have to do service they have to have a, a good grades um, and then at the end of that leadership program we ask them to write an essay essentially on energy policy for north dakota and we have a panel of experts who judge those essays, and we award scholarships to the, um, the essays that we think do the best job of capturing the vision for North Dakota's energy future. Well, ask, let me ask you, has the, uh, the uh, program been really popular so far? Are you raising a lot of money for scholarships? You know, um, this just got off the ground as far as the license plates. Mm -hmm. So we've been actually um, subsidizing the scholarship program out of just the general operations budget of the Lignite Energy Council because we believe in supporting those students. Um, they're going to be leaders in the community. They have great ideas. We want to get them excited about energy. Um, and, and so the, the money that we have raised off the license plates has covered a small percentage of the scholarship dollars that we give away, but we're hoping in the future it'll continue to grow. All right. Sounds sounds fantastic there. Uh, is there a particular area of study they need to pursue, or is it is it fairly general in there nature? There really isn't. Uh, we looked at that. You know, some of those scholarship programs ask kids to specialize in engineering or whatever, but we, we said we just want well-rounded individuals who have a knowledge of energy, and if you want to go into... Um, you know, nursing, broadcast, um, communications, history, uh, we're okay with that because we want um, the, the leaders of tomorrow in whatever field they may pursue to be knowledgeable about energy industries. Well, it's a fantastic program, I think. Uh, we're talking with uh, Jason Bohr, who is the uh, president and CEO of the Lignite Energy Council. Speaking of uh, education, Jason, you just uh, concluded a teacher seminar here the past week or so. Um, Tell us a little bit about how that went. We did. Each year we invite some teachers from across the Midwest to come and pursue continuing education credits, learn about the energy industry, uh, specifically coal. And we had more than 100 teachers in town for tours of the mines and the plants and to just get lesson ideas on how to integrate energy topics into their curriculum and um, give them a little additional background knowledge on what makes North Dakota tick energy-wise to take back to their classroom. So, again, we had more than 100 teachers in town. They had a great time, a good group of teachers, and uh, we do that every year. It's just one of the ways that we try and give back to the communities that we serve. Well, and the bonus for them, they, they get those required continuing education credits as well, or they can get them. Yeah. Yeah, so they are, you know, they get a benefit of coming here. Um we know that uh, teachers are always looking away, looking for ways to maximize every dollar, so we, we bear most of the cost for that, 
and hopefully they get out of here with uh, increased knowledge about the energy industry. Speaking of education again, let me, let me go back to the other the other topic we uh, we began with here the uh, the scholarship program. I, you know, I, I think maybe part of the underlying you said they they weren't specific to a particular uh, uh, train of education, but um, I'm curious, uh, you know, how how is the lignite industry doing in terms of um, succession planning and the continuing workforce? Is are are they having difficulty finding employees? I know that happens in some other professions in North Dakota right now. Yeah, you know, um, probably over the past year, it's it's improved a little bit. But up until very recently, and, and still for some of our members, workforce is their second largest concern after um, regulatory challenges. So there's just not as many students going into STEM fields as there was 30 years ago. Um, the, the jobs that we have in the industry pay great. You know, you can get a, a, a just a little bit of post-secondary education, get a degree, a certificate, and you're looking at eighty-five thousand dollars a year in this industry. Um, but a lot of students don't know that, so it's a challenge to get uh, get students around here and engaged in all of the job opportunities that we have in the mines and plants. But the truth is, just about no matter what your level of interest is or your area of specialization. We have a job for you in the energy industry in North Dakota. It's great news because you can really support a family in a very, um, at a very high standard of living. Well, you know the other thing. I, I, people tend to think of the the coal industry and around the around the country at least anyway. People say, well, coal's, you know, yesterday's fuel. But I tell you what, I I sat in on a, a recent session of the Lignite Research Council. There is a very promising future in coal and in uh, diff, finding different ways to use carbon dioxide and. And even rare earth minerals we're talking about now, too. There's there's some really promising research out there. Yeah, that's kind of a fallacy of the far left who are trying to talk down America's future. Um, and they talk down the future of coal. They don't, you know, these folks, uh, they don't understand how great American scientific brains are, that we have the capability with a little bit of work to produce electricity cleaner than it ever has been, cheaper than it ever has been. And all we need is a little bit of know-how and a little bit of support, um, and we can make it happen. And that's, you know, the ideas that you heard in that Lignite Research Fund uh, meeting, they're the tip of the iceberg of what we can do when we just harness the ingenuity of the American mind. It's it's huge. There really are some uh, real promising prospects in the, in the Lignite industry. I'd like to see us build a plant. Is that going to happen again someday, you think, a new, yeah. a new generating plant? It is. Um, it has to happen. Um, we think it's going to happen, um, and it's going to look different than anything that might you might have seen in the past because uh, it's, it's not about climate change. It's not about regulations. We've got to figure out how to monetize the whole chain of what lignite coal encompasses. So we're, we're going to burn it for electricity. Maybe we're going to break it down and make chemicals, but we're also going to try and monetize and sell that CO2 at the end of the chain. So every element of the production of electricity and the use of that lignite coal is going to result in revenue for somebody in North Dakota. So we're going to create jobs off of what used to be considered a waste product. And it's um, it, it's going to turn the energy industry in North Dakota on its head because all of a sudden you'll have more coal um, being utilized for things like that. But that's going to result in more oil and gas production, um, more chemical production, we have the potential to become an energy powerhouse um, beyond what we are already. And we know it's going to be it's going to be around for a long time to come because last I heard, I think we have at current rates of consumption about 800 years worth of coal in North Dakota, something like that. Yeah, and and that's using it in a, actually a pretty limited fashion. You know, you think about the fact that right now all we do is. Uh, we take coal, we turn it into electricity, and we have a limited amount of coal that we turn into natural gas and some other chemicals. Um, that's only the tip of the iceberg on what you can do with this stuff. You can make plastics, you can make um, liquid fuels, you can make other chemicals and fertilizers. So we have a huge reservoir of this lignite coal that uh, we're just scratching the surface on, on the potential benefits, and um, electricity is going to continue to be the mainstay of that and hopefully even in increase 
Um, but there's a lot that we can continue to do. There indeed is a bright future. Back to the beginning real quickly. Uh, if students are curious about this scholarship fund, where can they find out more? Um, if they go to one of the coal country high schools, um, then they can just talk to their guidance counselor. Um, if they're outside of that realm, you know, if they're um, in Bismarck, um, I would just say stay tuned because this scholarship program has been successful. We might have some statewide initiatives in the past um, that would allow some students to, to do the same kind of concept. So uh, I would say if you're in, uh, if you're not in the Coal Country High School, stay tuned. If you are, talk to your guidance counselor about that Coal Country Scholarship Leadership Academy. All right, fantastic. Jason, I want to thank you for joining us today. We've thank been you visiting. For me. Thanks, Jason. We've been uh, talking with Jason Borer from the Lignite Energy Council.